Taito's Chase HQ franchise. While it first made its debut in the arcades in 88, the original saw a few ports, most notably the Famicom, the NEC TurboGrafx-16, aka the PC Engine, Game Boy, and the Game Gear. Idaho's Slasher is fleeing towards the suburbs. The target vehicle is a white splitted sports car. Over. We read loud and clear, over. No! But what we're about to witness now, we're pretty much hauling ass for 16-bit sequel territory here. Case in point, Chase HQ2 and Super Chase HQ, both for the Sega Genesis and Super NES individually, circa 92 and 93. Although we're dealing with an entirely different variation from the rest of the franchise, especially the original no less, the premise for Chase HQ is as follows. The Chase Special Investigation Department, aka the eponymous Chase HQ, has assigned two different officers, Tony Gibson and Raymond Brody, inspired by Miami Vice's Crockett and Tubbs no less, to stop various fleeing criminals in high-speed pursuits as ordered and dispatched by their Heidi communicator Nancy in their black Porsche 928, but only in the case of the arcade version and their countless home and handheld ports. Okay, you're under arrest on suspicion of first-degree murder. Here, there are three different vehicles to travel and raise all kinds of havoc in. A red sports car, a blue and brown four-wheel drive van, and a yellow and gray semi-truck. Gameplay-wise, being more than just an intense racer, akin to Sega's OutRun, Prepare to qualify. Bandai Namco's pole position and winning run, Square Enix's Rad Racer 1 and 2, Knight Rider for the NES by the long since defunct Acclaim and Packin video, based on the David Hasselhoff show created by the late Glenn Larson, and even Taito's earlier efforts, Crashing Race and Top Speed, aka Full Throttle, except with a police themed twist, where you're informed of the target suspect and the vehicles they travel in thanks to dispatcher Nancy, whom you have to pursue and put out of commission. You're then treated to taking out one of the three new vehicles in this entry's case as mentioned before, and given an entire minute, 60 seconds to be precise, to carry out said pursuit. Should you deliberately waste that much time before approaching your target criminal's vehicle, fuck if after, you're given one to three continues via the options menu before starting, so I wouldn't waste that much either. Stats-wise, the red sports car is the fastest despite its weak strength and minimal weight, the semi-truck is heavier and stronger despite traveling slow, and the four-wheel drive van is an in-between you regarding all three. Control-wise, the D-pad guides your desired vehicle anywhere and shifts the gears from low to high and vice versa whenever necessary via up and or down. And by default, A lets you hit the brakes, B accelerates said vehicle, and C activates the turbo boosters, or in some cases the nitro boosters, of which are allowed 3 per stage and or life cycle. 
Upon reaching your target criminal's vehicle, hence the distance meter placed at the top right, you're then forced to collide into it repeatedly, and hence that's where your turbo, aka nitro boosters, come in. Without any hesitation or mercy whatsoever, FUCKING DEMOLITION DERBY STYLE NO LESS, until its engine scorches and short circuits to SHIT! Following criminals against whom you're assigned are a murder-slash-robbery suspect in a stolen yellow sports car, a drug-dealing gang member in a stolen hot pink sports car, a heavily armed kidnapper with a hostage in a purple van, a ruthless violent terrorist in a souped-up green pickup truck aided by an attack helicopter, despite the latter not serving as the target but must still be evaded nonetheless. And finally, the Syndicate's mob boss, known for illegal practices, including but not strictly limited to extortion no less, in a gargantuan-ass supply truck. Even examining and delving into a game franchise like this, I don't even need to stress how goddamn imperative it is to maintain both an attentive sense of sight and possess pinpoint accuracy when colliding into each fleeing target criminal's vehicle given the necessary allotted time duration and the Turbo Booster's usage stipulations. As tedious and unappealing as the gameplay framework is, I'll have you know it's any motherfucking thing BUT that is apart from the straightforward, yet questionably temperamental and convoluted at times, controls. Concerning the challenge aspects for both Chase HQ2 and Super Chase HQ, the latter of which will be further deliberated ASAP, they aren't to be fucked with at all when it comes to their respective difficulty balances. They pretty much boil down to not only having the best driving expertise, depending on which gear setting suits you the most, let alone how often you conserve your turbo boosters, but mainly the sharpest pair of peepers whenever any obstacle pops up in your way, depending on the stage's terrain, not counting any random civilian traffic, god forbid. In terms of random, nondescript pits and or bodies of water on either side of the road, which in some cases will summon a huge-ass wave, occasional stunt ramps, paperboy anyone? Ice, rocks, and the like, or if any goddamn target criminal pops out of their vehicle with any type of firearm while pursuing and colliding with their fucking ruthless asses, in which case, weave out of the fucking trajectory whenever necessary. Also, don't get me started for the sake of ass with those aforementioned support attack choppers either, the likes of which will roast your ass worse than an inexperienced chef on Hell's Kitchen. I'm of course referring to the Ramsey Show, not the fucking New York Borough, thereby spiking up the frustration higher than any of the earlier recounted terrain obstacles. Either way, refer to what the fuck I stated about the three continue stipulations should you happen to run out of time due to any of the common vehicle-related and or environmental setbacks, cause I'd rather wind up in an eternal pancreatic coma for the next five millenniums than to constantly repeat myself like a retarded-ass, irate-ass chat or Karen on the street over every minor-ass detail. an instant obvious comparison to its arcade predecessor and parent, never mind its goddamn home ports, the presentation's yet another fucking mixed bag, and far from the third-rate type no less, in that while most of the in-game elements are convincing at first, they can be rather redundant after at least the second or third missions. At least Nancy's an undeniable delight to catch a glimpse of whenever every mission is initiated, especially when she elaborates on which criminal's vehicles will go after. Likewise for the three main vehicles you commandeer, which for the record are mandatory for each varying case-dependent terrain, hence one of the minor details everyone tends to mindlessly overlook upon every briefing, I might add. Oh, speaking of details being carelessly and commonly overlooked, the police siren that pops up at random upon approaching a criminal's vehicle makes barely any sense at all, since the original arcade version clearly shows Tony placing said siren atop the Porsche, except in the Game Gear and Game Boy parts. Let's get moving, man! Regarding the backgrounds themselves, they're far from absolute eyesores, with the obvious exception of the scaling roads that can appear to be disorienting as all get out at times, given the Genesis' limitations of the era. I mean, take Road Blasters, EA's Road Rash 1, 2, and 3, Sega's Galaxy Force 2, right Afterburner 2, Space Harrier 2, and Super Thunderblade, and even the long-system-funked seismic software, copious systems, and Aspergasus Air Diver, for instance. 
Not to mention the random ass traffic that pops up on every road while making every effort to pursue your target criminal. And once again, don't fucking get me started about the post-mission stills whenever the new detectives apprehend every criminal, which like animation unlike the other Chase HQ titles, not counting the scoring and dialogue. I mean, shit, even I can make more convincing cutscenes than what's presented here, but to each their own. Either way, all personal gloating aside. Music and sound-wise, orchestrated by Yasuhisa Watanabe, acting under the alias Yak of Growl fame from Zuntata, way before joining Arika, care of Capcom, to compose Street Fighter EX2 Plus and EX3. All of the varying supporting themes kick way too much ass, from the opening intro, the mission briefing and vehicle selection phases, to all the differentiating stage terrains. Unfortunately, their sense of amusement dies down at the same rate as a lantern, when the criminal's vehicle is sighted near the end of each stage, as the aforementioned police siren blares constantly while the supporting boss anthem plays out, and you're also constantly ramming into said criminals while avoiding every common hazard. Also, there's only one soundbite heard thus far in the entire game, when Nancy reports and introduces herself every time an emergency situation arises at the start of each mission, just before her detailed briefing and orders scroll above. Don't believe me? Listen carefully. Also, considering the plain fact that she's fictional, why we're not even dating or married is way beyond me. Other than what's discussed so far, sound effects wise, there's next to dick all else, except for the random collisions that occur. Concerning the replayability, while the game appears to be a watered-down, pussy-whipped clone of the other Chase HQ outings, it at least vomits over them uncontrollably like Stan Marsh from South Park, if not by much. She happens to not only experiment with other rides, vehicles that is, in between each playthrough, let alone be ballsy enough to attempt each one on a different difficulty mode, there should be a substantial enough incentive to strap in and apprehend each and every douchebag criminal without mercy, making even the aforementioned Crockett and Tubbs, Riggs and Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon 1 through 4, and, God forbid, the TV series, Toshiki Takayama, aka Taka, and Yuji Oshida, aka Yuji, from NTV's Abu Night Deka, Cagney and Lacey, Mulder and Scully from The X Files, George Cuffs and Ted Wukai from Cuffs, and even Lean Carter from Rush Hour and Rizzoli and Isles look like both Mrs. Munger's class and Ed, Ed and Eddie's entire goddamn cul-de-sac community combined. Either way, you'd be fucking plastered out of your ass to leave Chase HQ2 out in the blistering cold, likewise for the next choice yet to be deliberated. Exhibit B, Super Chase HQ. Regarding the premise for this next entry, it's pretty much the same shit as all the others, except you're in control of a new investigation department officer. Then again, and as good as my research might be, it might be the same Tony from the previous Chase HQ titles, or maybe one of his descendants, dispatched by Nancy to pursue and bring every fleeing criminal to justice in nothing more than a red-hot sports car. I mean, for serious, who the fuck could expect anything goddamn less?
the gameplay framework's pretty much business as per usual, except the view shifted to the interior of the car, complete with the officer's expressions being displayed through the rearview mirror. Control-wise, everything's about the same, except Y hits the brakes, B accelerates the vehicle, and A activates the nitro. Yes, the game refers to the turbo as nitro this time, boosters, but can be swapped around in the options menu according to type beforehand, regarding only the former two commands, while X does dick all, and L and R shifts your car's gears manually. That is, if you've preset said shifting at manual beforehand, as opposed to auto, where the car can shift itself up whenever possible. In terms of this game's roster of criminals, whom you're given a minute and a half, 90 seconds that is, to pursue in every mission while zipping past random ass traffic this time around, a drug smuggling gang member armed with a pistol, driving a stolen red sports car at the beach, more gang members aboard a four wheel drive, and countless motorcycles in the desert. Even those same gang members, plus the suspected brainwashed councilman seen in a stolen gray car, past the grassy highway at sunset, terrorists aboard both a stolen silver truck, armed with a fucking rocket launcher, and even more motorcycles past another highway in front of mountains, and lastly the syndicate members and their leader aboard a dark gray sports car and helicopter. There's even an extra mission involving transporting blood supplies to a children's hospital due to an ambulance van being accidentally demolished. Oh, for the record, in order to access it, I'd avoid using a continue before Mission 5 if I were you. With the exception of everything else, the latter involves avoiding any collisions with random traffic or wasting too much motherfucking time, cause it'll turn out to be a colossal as fuck buzzkill if either of the two occur too goddamn often. At least the controls are about the same as before, input-wise, if somehow slightly improved, likewise for the conventional, if slightly irregular, gameplay framework. Challenge-wise, while well, everything is, once again, about the same as all the others, Super Chase HQ is on an entirely all-new level, no pun in fucking tended. Another hint to take advantage of, when pursuing every target criminal, avoid colliding into random civilian cars, or you'll end up losing points every Jesus damn time, and during that aforementioned extra mission within which blood supplies have to be safely transported to a faraway children's hospital, be sure not to slip up at any juncture whatsoever, get over, uh, I don't know, every other fucking emergency situation. Please refer to what the hell I took up earlier on that same aspect regarding Chase HQ2. And before I forget, you're stuck with two continues should you run out of time, or have your sports car severely ravaged to fuck all. On the graphical forefront, thanks to the console's iconic Mode 7 feature, applied in everything else besides just the opening title sequence and the stage intros, all the stages possess more distinct and less primitive glimpses, and then some. The interior of the main detective's car doesn't disappoint either, complete with a rear-view mirror revealing the driver's appropriate expressions even in the heat of every mission he gets tangled up in, whether racing to pursue every criminal, or ruthlessly colliding into said criminals, as per usual. Regarding everything else, the random civilian cars, not to mention the respective criminals' vehicles upon coming into direct contact with them, leave god knows how much to be desired, due to the obvious lack of detail, with the obvious exception of the cutscenes and even the briefings with a much simpler, if rather promising, depiction of Nancy. But other than that, why continue to tap dance around the fucking minefield over what fits in any in-game situation and what doesn't? Music and sound-wise, with Watanabe at the helm once more, this time alongside a pre busted move aka Puzzle Bobble, Naoto Yagi Shita, also from Zuntata, in collaboration with Kanosuke Suimura and Jag, each of this entry's new songs possess an appropriately fine-tuned tempo, rivaling even F-Zero and Top Gear, which for the record doesn't disappoint either. And while we're at it, the very same irksome, yet involuntary, siren is back, except minus any accompanying boss anthems whatsoever, which is a huge goddamn turn-off! <laughs> Shit, if it were up to me, I'd definitely edit in any song I desire. I mean, like, take these for instance. Apart from that, the other accompanying sound effects fall within mad territory, but at least there's more vocal sound bites included here by comparison, not just Nancy's own lines. Roger. 
This is Nancy. Good luck. But also the main detective's own lines as well. And yet again, I listen to these very carefully. Roger. You're under arrest. Replayability wise, must any more be expressed about either of these intense vehicular exploits that hasn't already been done so god knows how many motherfucking times over? Granted, the presentation's nothing much to write home about or cream your fucking boxers over, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm once again ultimately sealing my fate by shitting all over what Chase HQ2 and Super Chase HQ have to offer, and then some. As long as you're vigilant and receptive enough of what to expect throughout every high-speed pursuit, and above all, if you're itching for an excuse to dust off and rev up those motor coils, and most importantly, make every low-life jerk-off hooligan your forever bitches while dealing with one other unrelated mission, look no goddamn further than these two. You're under arrest. Therefore, my final verdict on Chase HQ2 and Super Chase HQ, by now, it should be yet another instant change to grasp why such a celebrated arcade hit centering around vehicular combat between two dedicated cops and endless disgruntled gangs and syndicates, or more specifically, these two console-exclusive follow-ups, have fallen very short of the common acclaim that many others deserve more than one could possibly fathom. I'm glaring straight at you two, Twisted Metal and Vigilante 8. On a scale of 1 to 10, here's how I rate both. All statistics set in stone, words can't express how much I recommend both, and especially the home ports of the original Chase HQ, preferably the TurboGrafx-16 version, no less. Should you happen to feel the irresistible and often arising need for speed, and if you're able to, scope out Special Criminal Investigation, Super Chase Criminal Termination, and even the real Chase HQ 2 arcade follow-up developed for title by Gamewax London, complete with FMV cutscenes featuring the live-action depiction of Nancy, portrayed by British model and actress Jackie Degg of Eurotrip fame. Trust me, you won't regret him in the slightest! Until then, as per usual, this is the one and only Hardcore Retro Guy triumphantly signing off. <laughs>